Now, look, we, we talked about kind of the nuclear way, fission and fusion, and it improves it, but it's still a thousand years. However, that seems the juicy one, right? This seems the one where we're going to actually get some real speeds here. Yeah, so the one, the ultimate energy storage, it's taking matter and antimatter. Okay. Um, so antimatter is just like matter, except all the charges are reversed. That's right. Um, so and, and antimatter is real, right? This isn't a made-up thing. It's no, real. This is not science fiction. It's routinely manufactured in particle accelerators around the world. Yep. Um, and it's the best possible energy density because if you get, a, say, a proton and an antiproton, the antimatter counterpart, yep. they both have the same mass, just one has a positive, one has a negative charge. Yep. If you combine them, they annihilate each other and produce gamma rays. Okay. And they give out a lot of energy. The energy is given by E equals mc squared, the yep. most famous equation ever. So what happens is the m is the mass in kilograms and c is the speed of light in meters per second. Okay. So if you take one kilogram, so m is one, yep. c is three by 10 to the eight, three you by get... 10 to the eight squared is about 10 to the 17. So you get about 10 to the 17 joules out, okay. which is about 10 to 100 times bigger than the most energetic atom bomb ever. And that's just one kilogram of matter and antimatter. So clearly the scalable factor here, assuming we can make antimatter enough, is just blows out nuclear yeah. reactions. Out of I mean, let's imagine you were made of antimatter and I was made of matter. Yep. First and of we... all, you'd be glowing because the air in this room is normal matter. As it hit your skin, you'd be annihilating and producing intense gamma rays, so I'd be dead. But, you know, we'll but let's claim that we sh shook, shook hands. It, we Boom. would annihilate. And the explosion would be enough to rip the Earth in half. Ooh, i like to try this. I wouldn't. <laughs> well, I'd like to try this in space because that's going to tell us we're going to get a lot of energy out, right? That's right. You certainly get a lot of energy. Um, so this is, um, how do you make antimatter? Well, at the moment, the, the most prolific manufacturer of this is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, mm -hmm. which smashes beams of particles together. And in the fireball, when the protons collide with each other, some antimatter is created. So, and you can siphon it away with carefully designed magnetic fields. So why, why does this create the most, though? Just because it's got a bigger particle accelerator with more energy and uh, so essentially the, the speeds and the energy really generate that. Okay. So, so uh, but, but, you know, certainly do it with other particle accelerators, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it is done with other particle That's accelerators. Right. The trouble is the current particle accelerators only tops make nanograms of antimatter. So that's really small. That's nowhere near a kilogram. That's nowhere near my nuclear bomb. That's true. Now, in principle, if you were trying to really optimize design to make more of it, you could, because these point accelerators, this is not their main purpose. That's right, exactly. It's a side effect. Um, and even a nanogram is still an awful lot of atoms. Yeah. Um, so, but that's, so that's one problem. You don't know how to make it anything like enough quantities. Okay. And it would be very energetically expensive to do it. That's right. But maybe we could. Um, another problem is storing it. Yeah, because, you if, wait, so if antimatter reacts with all of matter, right? If I'm reacting with the air in here, how do we store it with stuff that is matter? Yes, I mean, you don't just put it in a fuel tank. Yeah, it's like... The antimatter will react with the skin of your fuel tank and blow a large hole in the earth. So how do we store it? Well, you've got to store it somehow so it never touches the matter. Okay. And that might be possible some sort of magnetic bottle that keeps it away from the walls in a hard vacuum. Okay, all right. It's maybe easier in space. You could have an antimatter spacecraft next to a matter yeah, spacecraft sure. yeah, or something yeah, okay. like that. Okay. The solar wind is still going to give you enormous grease. So you need That's to shield right. it from that. But basically, you need to keep it in a hard vacuum. And you know, maybe it's possible. We can certainly store the nanograms we've got at the moment. In that yeah, sort of... okay, all right, okay. But so if a nanogram if... hits the side, it's not the end of the world. If a, <laughs> if a kilogram does, it is the end of the world. Uh, at least the end of your city. Yeah, okay. Um, so you don't want something going wrong in your fuel tank, right? So you're, yeah, you're, so you're going to have to store it in For safely interstellar in Interstellar travel, you're going to have yeah. many, many tens of kilograms of antimatter. That's right. And you're going to have to very carefully sequester it away from the matter. And it's going to have to work for a long time, right? It's not an instantaneous thing. You need your fuel to last for years, which is things go wrong. Yep. And the other trouble is when you combine the matter and antimatter, you get gamma rays out. Yeah. And turning gamma rays into useful energy and thrust, yeah. as opposed to dead people from radioactivity nearby, yeah. is quite hard. Presumably you could surround it with a really big water tank or something like this, Bank and the gamma rays would heat up the water, yep. the water would go to steam, and then you blow the steam, I don't know, in a turbine. But it's actually trying to get useful energy out of matter and antimatter is really hard. So even though we generate a lot of energy, it's really hard to actually use that energy. Yes. I mean, if, if you just wanted to carefully irradiate yourself with gamma rays, then this is great. <laughs> but you can't still, if you can steer all the gamma rays to go backwards, but how do you steer a gamma ray? I mean, yeah, okay. Uh, it's, uh, so th th that's a real problem. Okay. So, yes, in principle, this is wonderful. But the Starship Enterprise in Star Trek was powered by a matter antimatter drive, but uh, there's a lot of energy there. But yeah, okay. 